Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to look at uh, another form of market failure, negative externalities of consumption. So we're not looking at the production side, we're looking at the household creating some type of negative spillover effect. And there are a variety of examples, perhaps uh, consuming or use of your gasoline car that emits carbon, uh, excessive use of alcohol, um, we're going to use the example of cigarettes. A little bit of some, uh, some background information about cigarette consumption. Um, cigarettes are smoked by over 1 billion people. Um, that's about one out of every seven people on the planet. All right, There's just over 7 billion people on the planet. So that's a staggering number. It states that nearly 20% of the world's population in 2014 were smoking. Um, 800 million of these smokers, the majority, um, were men. And uh, while smoking rates have leveled off or declined in developed nations, um, consumption is continuing to rise in poor developing nations. What's interesting is that uh, we have a ranking, a 2016 ranking of cigarette consumption, uh, I assume based on sales. And we can see that Andorra is number one, Luxembourg, number two, and then we have Belarus, North Macedonia, Albania, Belgium, and so on. Um, but we must keep in mind with Andorra, Luxembourg, and Belgium that they sell cigarettes duty-free. And as a result, uh, they sell quite a bit. People from Spain, from France go into Andorra, they buy those cigarettes, and they take it back to their own country. So if we're tracking the sales of cigarettes, Andorra um, ranks high, not so much for its own domestic consumption, but, be but because of the amount of sales um, that, they, uh, that they have of their cigarettes. Okay, but an interesting less, uh, list nonetheless. Uh, lung cancer, why is this is a negative spillover? Well, one, you know, we have secondhand smoke, people who don't smoke that breathe in um, that secondhand smoke are negatively affected and impacts their, their own health, the health of their lungs. Um, some other information here, smoking, when we look at this information, tobacco smoking, by far the main contributor to lung cancer. And here we see charts that chart the relationship or the correlation between cigarette consumption and lung cancer. And we see that there's a very, very strong correlation between the two. Um, in addition, well, how does that affect society still? Well, if uh, a significant number of people who smoke get sick and develop lung cancer and they utilize public health services, it's society and the taxpayer that is paying for that treatment. So lung cancer we see in the United Kingdom is the third most common cancer in the UK. And remember, this is uh, a type of cancer that can be avoided. If we can reduce smoking, we can reduce the amount of lung cancer and thus reduce the number of cases and reduce the amount of public tax revenue spent through the public health system to treat these individuals. And that's an opportunity cost. Those funds could be used for something else within society. So here we have the UK. 46,400 people were diagnosed with the disease in 2014 um, and is the most common cause of cancer-related death. And also the opportunity cost of people dying perhaps prematurely and, and you know, not producing and contributing to the economy and so on. That's from an, an economic perspective. Okay, so let's go ahead and illustrate this. So again, we're looking at negative externalities of consumption. We're using cigarettes as our example, the market for cigarettes. And we're measuring the price of cigarettes on the y-axis, the quantity of cigarettes consumed and uh, supplied on the x-axis. We have an upward sloping supply of cigarettes labeled MPC because this is the, the, the um, private tobacco companies that are employing their resources, land, labor, and capital uh, as private inputs to produce the private output. So that's their marginal private costs of production. And we have our downward sloping demand curve by the household for cigarettes labeled marginal private benefit.
Now let's keep in mind that the elasticity, even though I haven't drawn the demand curve to be vertical, we're gonna just keep in mind that the PED for cigarettes is less than one because of its addictive quality. And we can also assume that the PES is greater than one since it's a manufactured good, it can be mass produced, the input inputs can be so sourced from a variety of suppliers. So because it's manufactured, um, it responds to a change in price, they can dramatically increase output. So we're just gonna keep that in mind as background uh, knowledge. Now, there's no problem with the uh, production side. We're gonna assume that on the production side, there's no negative externality being caused. So we're gonna label that the MPC is equal to the marginal social costs of production. We're highlighting that the household is creating that negative spillover. So MPB is not equal to MSB. Okay. So basic analysis, we know that we're S1 equals D1, or in the free market, where the marginal private costs of production is equal to the marginal private benefit, it establishes an equilibrium price in the free market at PM and equilibrium quantity in the free market at QM, where quantity supplied is equal to quantity demanded. But there is a social, um, I'm sorry, yeah, there is a, uh, uh, a social benefit that is less than the private benefit. So we're gonna go ahead and illustrate that. This reflects that society would like less consumption of cigarettes. We'll place it right about here. Oh, and uh, let me go ahead and change the color. We'll use blue just for consistency. All right, so society idea would like less consumption. That's gonna be reflected by D2. D2 equal to the marginal social benefit. So since society would like less consumption of cigarettes, we notice that at QM, at QM, the marginal social cost of the consumption of cigarettes is greater than the marginal social benefit, all right, which we can see here. Here's point B. Point A is the marginal social cost greater than the marginal social benefit, meaning that there is an over allocation of resources to the production and consumption of cigarettes, and society would like less. And that welfare loss is represented by this triangular area here. Okay, so here we see the welfare loss. And that welfare loss, again, is represented by people developing lung cancer, going to public hospitals, using public health services, and the taxpayer society, in essence, paying for that. And that is an opportunity cost. Those funds could have been used for something else. This is a preventable disease. The number of cases of lung cancer caused by cigarette consumption could be reduced. One little technique, one little strategy, just to remember whether or not you have drawn the welfare loss correctly, is remember that if it's negative, society wants less. So if you imagine this as an arrow, it should be pointing inwards because society would like less of it, okay? So where is the social optimum? Social optimum is achieved at point C, where MSB equals MSC, okay? That provides the optimal price, at P opt and the optimal quantity, social optimum out level of output at Q opt. So we'll have Q opt and P opt. And there we have illustrated a negative externality of consumption. So let's go ahead and analyze this as we would for a paper exam. As can be seen, we have graph. A, illustrating the market for cigarettes. It's illustrating a negative externality of consumption. Cigarettes being a negative externality where the household, as they consume cigarettes, can develop lung cancer. And if they develop lung cancer, using public health services for their treatment and society paying for that private consumption and the negative impact of that private consumption. We wanna make a note that the price elasticity of demand for cigarettes is less than one due to its addict addictive qualities, while the price elasticity of supply is greater than one since cigarettes are a manufactured good. In the free market, 
Oh, well, first let's uh, highlight we're measuring price on the y-axis and quantity on the x-axis. We have an upward sloping supply curve labeled S1, which is equal to our marginal private cost of production, equal to our marginal social cost of production. We're assuming that there's no negative externality generated from the production of cigarettes. We have two downward sloping demand curves labeled D1 and D2. D1 equal to our marginal private benefit, D2 equal to our marginal social benefit. In the free market, where S1 equals D1, or where MPC equals MPB, marginal private cost equal to marginal private benefit, it provides a free market equilibrium price at PM and free market equilibrium quantity at QM where quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. But we notice that at QM, the marginal social cost at point A is greater than the marginal social benefit at point B, meaning that there's an overallocation of resources to the production and consumption of this good. Society would like less consumption of cigarettes. Why? Because it generates a welfare loss, which is the shaded area, and that welfare loss represents the cost to the taxpayer of providing tax revenue to the government, to the public health services, to treat those who develop lung cancer as a result of their consumption of cigarettes. Thus, social optimum would be achieved where MSC equals MSB. That would provide a optimal price at P opt and the optimal quantity at Q opt, right? Thus at point C, we achieve the reduced consumption and production and achieve the social optimal level of output. So that's it, that's our analysis. In later videos, we will then start applying solutions. How can we solve a negative externality of consumption? How can the government intervene to correct this market failure? If you have any questions, feel free to comment and don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.